Hello and welcome back. Kamal here once again with what looks like a rather cute looking enig roll. I'm saying cute because it's trying really really hard to look frightening, but honestly it's not. It's rather hospitable, relatively speaking anyway. So we have lots of logarithms being thrown around here and there. And what we have is the integral from 1 to e of 1 by x log x times log to the alpha of 1 minus log x divided by 1 plus log x dx, where the alpha parameter here is greater than negative 1. So it seems logical to start off with a substitution that is letting log x equal u, which implies on differentiation that 1 by x dx equals du. Now what about the limits? As x approaches 1, we have u approaching log 1, which is 0. And for x approaching e, we have u approaching 1, of course. So the integral i of alpha now transforms into an integral from 0 to 1. Now 1 by x log x turns into du, but we still have 1 by log x, which is, of course, 1 by u. We have log to the alpha of 1 minus u divided by 1 plus u du. Okay, cool. So, it looks like we've done something, right? And now we can invoke another very cool substitution that is letting 1 minus u divided by 1 plus u equal t. This is a very useful substitution because the function phi of x defined as 1 minus x divided by 1 plus x is a self-inverse function. So, you have exactly the same structure determining the relation of u in terms of t. And I can show you that really quick. Expanding using 1 plus u, we have 1 minus u equal to t times 1 plus u, so that's t plus t times u. And solving for u in terms of t, we have t u plus u equal to 1 minus t. Factoring out the u variable gives us t equal to Wait a minute. No, wait. Factoring out the u variable gives us u equal to 1 minus t divided by 1 plus t. Okay, cool. So it works both ways. And now we can work out the differential element quite nicely. We have on differentiation du equal to 1 plus t times the derivative of 1 minus t being negative 1 minus 1 minus t. And the derivative of 1 plus t is, of course, 1. And we have 1 plus t squared in the denominator dt. So that means we have some cancellation here. So that's negative 2 dt divided by 1 plus t squared. That's what the differential element transforms into. And what about the limits of integration? Well, clearly, as u approaches 0, we have t approaching 1. And u approaching 1, we have t approaching 0. So the limits are just switched up, implying that the integral function i of alpha equals the integral from 1 to 0. Let's see what we have. We have 1 by u, and we know how to express u in terms of t. So that means we have 1 plus u divided by 1, uh, 1 minus u. Terribly sorry about that. I wrote it in terms of u again. Doesn't really matter. You can name the dummy variable anything you want, but because we're transforming the integral, I might as well keep it, keep it real, I guess? Anyway, we have log alpha of log to the alpha of t. So we have log to the alpha of t, and the differential element is, of course, negative 2. We can get rid of the negative sign by just switching up the limits of integration, so that works out quite nicely. We have dt divided by 1 plus t squared. Some cancellation is in order, and in the denominator, we have 1 minus t times 1 plus t, which, of course, gives us 1 minus t squared. So we have integral 0 to 1 log to the alpha of t divided by 1 minus t squared dt. And the partial fraction decomposition is pretty easy. All we have to do is just take this term. We have 1 by 1 minus t squared. We know how to factor out the denominator. So we'll have a 1 minus t and a plus sign over here should do couple ones here and a factor of one half to balance things out which implies that i of alpha equals two times one half terribly sorry about that the integral from zero to one of log to the alpha of t divided by one minus t 
plus log to the alpha of t divided by 1 plus t dt, where the twos cancel out quite nicely. We now have a couple of integrals to evaluate that are honestly pretty standard. For both of them, we're going to make the substitution that is letting log t equal some other variable. We could call it z, or we could name it something fancy like sigma, rho, whatever. We're just going to keep things simple and rename the dummy variable back to x. So we're going to let log t equal negative x. And this implies that t equals e to the negative x, which further implies that dt equals e to the negative x dx. Now, as t approaches 0, we have x approaching infinity. And as t approaches 1, we have x approaching 0. Okay, cool. So this implies that i of alpha equals the integral from infinity to 0 of log to the alpha of t, which would be negative x to the alpha, which can be written as negative 1 to the alpha times x to the alpha divided by 1 minus e to the negative x. And the differential element transforms into e to the negative x dx with a negative sign that we get rid of by switching up the limits. So we now have integrals from 0 to infinity, the other one being that of negative 1 to the alpha times x to the alpha again, divided by 1 plus e to the negative x, and again we have e to the negative x dx. Now to invoke one of my favorite tools, the geometric series expansion, whereby we know we can expand 1 by 1 minus x as the sum over the non-negative integers k of x to the k and the reciprocal of 1 plus x, as the sum over, again, the non-negative integers of negative 1 to the k times x to the k, provided that the absolute value of x is less than 1. And of course, this is valid for e to the negative x on our interval of integration. So that means we can expand 1 by 1 minus e to the negative x as the sum over the non-negative integers k of e to the negative k times x, and 1 by 1 plus e to the negative x as the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times e to the negative kx. Now making use of these series expansions, we have the integral function i of alpha equal to negative 1 to the alpha times the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the alpha times e to the negative x times the sum over k of e to the negative kx dx plus another similar looking integral, negative 1 to the alpha integral 0 to infinity x to the alpha times e to the negative x times the sum over k again of this time negative 1 to the k times e to the negative kx integration with respect to x. Of course, these terms are independent of the index variable k, so we take them inside the summation operator. And on switching up the order of the integration and summation operators, we can write all of this as negative 1 to the alpha times the sum over k of the integrals from 0 to infinity of x to the alpha times on multiplying the exponential functions we have e to the negative k plus 1 times x dx plus again negative 1 to the alpha times the sum over k of the integrals from 0 to infinity of x to the alpha wait we have an extra term here negative 1 to the k can be taken outside the integration operator of course that's exactly what we're doing then we have again integral 0 to infinity of x to the alpha times e to the negative k plus 1 x dx and now to make one final substitution we're gonna let k plus 1 x equal u, which implies that dx equals du divided by k plus 1, and the limits are clearly not bothered. So this implies that i of alpha equals negative 1 to the alpha times the sum over k. Uh, terribly sorry about that. Much better. The sum over k of the integrals from 0 to infinity now, what exactly does x to the alpha turn into? That would be u to the alpha divided by k plus 1 to the alpha. Then we have e to the negative u, du divided by k plus 1 to the alpha. And of course, we can take that outside the integration operator. So here we go. I'm just going to rewrite all this. 
we have 1 by k plus 1 to the alpha times k plus 1. So we have k plus 1 to the alpha plus 1. And then we have the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the alpha times e to the negative u du plus the other integral, which is negative 1 to the alpha times the sum over k of negative 1 to the k divided by, again, k plus 1 to the alpha times, again, the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the alpha times e to the negative u du. And this integral here is, of course, our beloved gamma function evaluated at alpha plus 1. Okay, cool. This is quite nice. We have i of alpha equal to negative 1 to the alpha. And gamma al alpha plus 1 is independent of the index variable k. So we can factor that out along with the negative 1 to the alpha plus 1 term. And that means we're left with the sum over the non-negative integers k of 1 by k plus 1 to the alpha plus 1 which could be rephrased as the sum over the positive integers n of n to the alpha plus 1. Then we have this other sum over, again, the positive integers n of negative 1 to the n minus 1 divided by n to the alpha plus 1, which reminds us of two more of our favorite functions. One is the zeta function at alpha plus 1, and the other being its cousin, the eta function at alpha plus 1. And what about the relation between the gamma and the eta functions? Eta alpha plus 1 would be equal to 1 minus 2 to the 1 minus this parameter. So that's 1, uh, that's 1 minus alpha, right? So some cancellation. We have negative alpha left behind times the zeta function add alpha plus 1. So that means what exactly do we have left? We have i of alpha equal to negative 1 to the alpha times gamma alpha plus 1 times, let's see, we have zeta. Can't write zeta today for some reason. Zeta alpha plus 1, you get the idea. Plus zeta alpha plus 1 minus 2 to the negative alpha times zeta alpha plus 1, which is pretty cool. Meaning we can factor out zeta alpha plus 1, which means I'm only having to struggle writing it one more time. And what was left behind, that would be 2 minus 2 to the negative alpha, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's it. So that's exactly what we have here. Okay, cool. That was a very interesting solution development. And we have our favorite functions, the gamma and the zeta functions here. Well, two of our favorite functions. We have several favorite functions, of course. And this is pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something from the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram, and in case you like the effort I'm putting out, consider supporting me on Patreon. All links in the description box. Thank you. See you next time.